Thank you, Your Honor. I really do appreciate uh, the time uh, that you're giving me for this space. Um, the reason I am here, first of all, I wanted to address one thing. Um, I am myself suffering from dissociative identity disorder. And we are not monsters. We are not really only victims, but we are survivors. Um, myself, having no access to therapy, um, I needed to find ways in order to cope with my own severity of trauma. Um, and I had to navigate the world through chronic poverty, bullying, but also the system removing everything from me. Um, and I had a lot of anger issues. And I did not commit those crimes that I do not excuse, but I do understand. So if really the court thinks that he has to pay for the crimes that he committed, which is not his fault, I do think that there is one modality of techniques that will really benefit him uh, instead of um, punishing him. He does not deserve punishing. He deserves empathy. He deserves love and understanding. And these tools will provide him the self-compassion, the self-empathy. And I can nav navigate this world with him. If it was as needed, and I'm gonna do it as a volunteer, I do not need the money for it. And I have all these results in the videos that I can show you uh, in the, in the uh, process that I'm doing. Right. And may I ask for what reason we should believe this is a good treatment for Mr. Fleck? Thank you, Your Honor. So, as I um, navigate the world, I uh, do this for four years now. And um, I have I had a lot of um, issues like neurological, including um, brain injuries. But I, I, I wanted to make sure to um, bring someone who knows more about the subject. And um, I heard one of your members here talk about music uh, and music therapy and how uh, it makes us old. Um, but the therapist is not here anymore. Music therapy is a part of drama therapy that I, I do practice. So, I like I said, and I can also provide to other patients um, in the place. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to make you hear. Emotion is not your enemy. Shoving down and stuffing away our emotions doesn't solve anything. The emotions that we suppress need to be expressed. This is what we do in drama therapy. Drama therapy is a branch of the creative arts therapy, such as dance movement therapy, art therapy, and music therapy. It is an active and experiential healing process. As a registered drama therapist, I'm trained in psychotherapy, and I use techniques like you might find in a drama class, such as creative play, improvisation, and acting to treat mental health issues. Now, in typical psychotherapy, we rely on words to get us through. But have you ever had the experience where words just weren't enough? That's because we're more than just talking heads. The emotions that we have live inside our body as much as our brains. And so in order to fully express them, we need to embody them, not only talk about them. I work in inpatient psychiatric treatment where I facilitate drama therapy groups and sessions. Through play, you're connecting with someone in a real non-threatening way. So while my approach may seem light-hearted, it is not light-minded. Because as we continue, we begin to play with more difficult concepts. So I might ask someone, show me what it's like to have a temper tantrum. Now for someone who's been taught their whole life that showing emotion is a sign of weakness, this can be terrifying. But when we're given permission to feel and feel big, it can be exhilarating. Or let's say I'm working with a client who grew up in an abusive home. 
I might ask them, what does anger feel like in your body? Can you strike an angry pose or say something with an angry voice? Keep in mind, my client has only ever seen anger expressed as physical violence. But if we can safely embody and act out anger without it resulting in aggression, we're rehearsing new emotional responses and changing generational patterns. See, now we've created an emotional laboratory, a safe place to experiment and try on different roles and emotions without committing to consequences. And as clients try on different emotional outfits, they might find that one outfit is exactly what they've been looking for. They might say something like, whoa, it felt really good to be angry. And it reminded me of the time that my dad left us when we were kids, and I was so mad that I had to put on a brave face for my younger siblings. Or if I ask someone to play the role of goddess of the universe, she might say, wow, that was really weird. But I wonder what it might be like to carry some of that confidence into my everyday life. Now, you might be thinking, acting, how is that really addressing anything? Isn't that just plain pretend? To which philosopher Jacques Derrida would say, to pretend I actually do the thing. I have therefore only pretended to pretend. Our imaginations are so powerful. We can imagine something and it creates a real feeling. So that when my client, deep in grief, wants to speak to her mother who died from a drug overdose, we can create that. Now, my client understands she's not actually speaking with her dead mother, but by imagining what it would be like, creating a real feeling, and then saying the things she's been holding on to, this is how we clean out our emotional closets. Or, if as a child, you are constantly criticized or scared and never received the warmth of love that every child deserves, let's go back in time. Find that little you, give them a hug, encourage them, and give them that feeling of love. Now, you may not actually be back with your inner child, but that feeling of self-love you just created is a real feeling that you can take with you. Now, this is not self-delusion. This is an essential creative act of allowing ourselves to express and embody the things that we have suppressed. We live in a tumultuous world where few escape traumatic events, such as feeling unsafe, abuse, conflict, loss, or even a global pandemic. There's no cure for dealing with trauma, no magic wand, but there are some steps we can take. Now, a victim is someone who has something happen to them. An actor is an agent who makes action happen. The trademark of trauma is feeling helpless or unable to act. The very meaning of the word drama is to act. Trauma renders us powerless, but drama gives us power to move, act, feel, and express with the very body that has been traumatized. If we are to move forward with our emotional and mental well-being, whether that's dealing with traumatic events or just the emotional residue of everyday living, we need to become actors in our own lives and clean out those emotional closets. William Shakespeare famously wrote, all the world is a stage and all the men and women merely players. Don't just sit in the audience of your life. It might be time to get dramatic. Mr. Arthur Fleck, I want to start by acknowledging the immense pain and suffering that has led you to this moment. Your dissociative identity disorder is a testament to the trauma and abuse you've endured, and I recognize that your actions were a cry for help, a desperate attempt to cope with the unbearable. As I sentence you to involuntary commitment, I do so with the understanding that you are not a monster, but a complex and multifaceted individual deserving of compassion and empathy. Your treatment plan will include drama therapy sessions, which I believe will be a powerful tool in your healing journey. Through drama therapy, I hope you will find a safe space to express yourself, to confront the traumas of your past, and to develop a more compassionate relationship with your alternate identities. 
I encourage you to embrace this process, to lean into the discomfort, and to trust that you will emerge stronger and more resilient. Your commitment will be reviewed regularly, not to punish, but to support your growth and progress. I want you to know that I believe in your capacity for healing, and I am committed to ensuring that you receive the care and resources necessary to reclaim your life. Remember, Arthur, you are not alone in this journey. There are those who care for you, who want to help you heal, and who believe in your potential for redemption and growth. Hold on to hope, and know that a brighter future awaits you.